પ્રગ્યસ છે એમનો તો ઇન્ટ્રોડક્શન નહીં કરીશ કેમ કે આઈ કેન નોટ ડુ જસ્ટિસ ટુ દેટ આઈ વિલ ઇન્ટ્રોડ્યુસ ધ પર્સન હુ ઇઝ ગોઈંગ ટુ ઇન્ટ્રોડ્યુસ હેમ આપણા નીતિનભાઈ લેટ મી ટેલ યુ સમથિંગ અબાઉટ નીતિનભાઈ અમે ઘણી ચીજોમાં ઝઘડા કરતા હોઈએ છીએ ઘણી ચીજોમાં અમે સાથે કામ કરતા હોઈએ છીએ બટ વન થિંગ આઈ ટેલ યુ કે એમને દેરાસર પ્રતિ આપણા સંઘ પ્રતિ જેટલો છે એટલો આઈ થિંક એ વેરી ફ્યુ પીપલ કુડ રિકોગ્નાઇઝ ઇટ એક સેકન્ડ થિંગ હી ઇઝ એમ્બેસડર ઓફ જૈન સેન્ટર જૈન સેન્ટરનો નામ આઈ થિંક એ બધા કોન્ટિનેન્ટમાં આફ્રિકામાં એશિયામાં જ્યાં જ્યાં એ જાય છે ઇવન કેરેબિયનમાં દેરાસરનો નામ થઈ થતો હોય છે એને આજે આફ્ટર આ આપણો પ્રોગ્રામ પતશે એ એમને ઓનર કરવામાં આવે છે બીજી ઓર્ગનાઇઝેશન બીજી જગ્યાએ એમને ઓનર કરાય છે સો વી ડેફિનેટલી આર પ્રાઉડ ઓફ હેમ વી ફીલ વી આર પ્રવલાઇઝ દેટ વી હેવ પર્સન ઓફ હિઝ કેલિબર ટુ ઇન અવર કમ્યુનિટી એન્ડ વીલ કન્ટિન્યુ ટુ યુઝ હેમ એઝ લોંગ એઝ વી કોડ ફોર ધ એઝ મેની થિંગ્સ એઝ વી કોડ સો વિદાઉટ એડિંગ એનીથિંગ let me give it to nitin bhai jay janendra thank you very much uh, virendra bhai we happened to have worked together in 94 95 when virendra bhai was vice president and i was public relations officer so we go a long way back why are you here today how many of you have heard about virchav raghav ji gandhi Okay, great. All of you almost. And that's very encouraging. Uh, who was he? Very popularly known and said and recognized as forgotten hero. Very appropriate from one perspective. But more important, you will not be able to count, at least I could not, when we start adding adjectives a reformer a patriot a philosopher protector you just keep going but i will end and not mention in between as he was a jain we all should be very proud of and he has many first that he did in his life born on August 25, 1864. He actually was a good friend and a close ally of Mahatma Gandhi. And the scripture says about several discussions between them and along with Srimad Raj Chandra, he is also credited with propagating Ahinsa to Mahatma Gandhi for what he was and he did. for all of us he was the first jain to land in this soil where we are sitting today in 1893 for the third world parliament of religion first graduate from jain community in as per the history he graduated from bombay university first jain and again claimed to be the first indian to get barrister degree from london he graduated at the age of 20 years first person to become secretary of jain associations at a tender age of 21 and what did he do i'll give you two examples for palitana they used to charge us pilgrimage tax even i hadn't heard of it forget about the next generation you guys will know about it and he worked on it and that was top years past second our very important holy tit samet sikar where 23 of our tirthankars liberated themselves they were building a slaughter houses in and around that temple and as a secretary he fought and stopped that that virchav raghav ji gandhi to resurrect him because in the transition in the period since we lost him literally 1964 in mumbai gurudev chitrabhanu ji 
celebrated his 100th birth centenary. It still took several decades, and in 1997, Jaina formed VRG Scholarship Committee. And that committee gave away 15,000 rupees scholarships for people to learn Jain religion to Jains as well as non-Jains. And more than 80 people were given their scholarships and 50% of them happened to be non-Jains. And they went on to study in 24 different universities. They were all in India at that time. Talking about the universities, that takes me to the next speaker. 2011 September, with the help of Dr. Sulek Jain from Houston, Mr. Dilip Shah from Philadelphia, they are both past presidents of Jaina, Dr. Jay Shah, the then president of Jain Center of Southern California, and few of us, we were able to start Jain education at Claremont Lincoln University. And I happened to be working very closely with Ingram Professor of School of Theology, Professor Philip Clayton. And we since established Center for Jain Studies. Things have changed, but the Center for Jain Studies still remain. And we were fortunate that we could take Dr. Clayton to Jaina Convention in 2013, where he spoke with us on Virchav Raghavji Gandhi. And when we approached Virendrabai, our president, and of course we intend to go to many other Jain centers because government of India is celebrating 150 years of Virchav Raghavji Gandhi. Originally thought to be from last August, now I'm told this August, it doesn't matter when, how, where, why. The most important thing is, we need to know about this man who demised early at the tender age of 37 in 1901, but he has left his legacy. There have been books written on him, and there is one drama, Gandhi before Gandhi, which was played actually in Jaina Convention, that tells about the, oh, that, well, Jay's by is indicating we played that in Jain Center of Southern California also. Thank you. Yes, it was actually taken to a few other Jain centers afterwards and before. Uh, no, afterwards. So Jaina was the inauguration of it. And Philip Bai happened to have been there to witness it. So I will request, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Clayton, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the year is 1893, and India sends two great ambassadors to the West. Things have changed. This is no longer a West that sees only itself. For the first time in, for humanity's history, the sense of us being a global community arises. And the one great ambassador of the Hindu religion, Swami Vivekananda, speaks to an assembly of 7,000 people at the world's first parliament of religions. And on the stage with him is an equally great ambassador, the first ambassador of Jains to the West, Virchan Gandhi. And V.R. Gandhi makes an equally great impression on the West. Now, fast forward 120 years, and you ask, what has come of that message? Has it continued to be noticed, or has it been forgotten? Ha have Jains become just another cultural group, a cultural minority in the great melting pot of the United States? Ladies and gentlemen, I came to give this short talk today to argue that that is not true and that this great ambassador brought a message which has grown to be increasingly influential 
to non-Jains. Oh, I'm going to keep moving to the left and see if... Also, can you turn down the microphone? Is it possible to make it lower? I'll also move this lower. Because I have a loud voice, so I need a very small microphone, right? And so it's interesting, why then would you ask a non-Jain to come to the stage? There, that's, uh, is that better now? Thank you. Yeah, we don't. I can just keep speaking louder and louder, so you'll find. You can go back a little bit. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Because, ladies and gentlemen, somebody had to come and to say, as a non Jain, how has this message been received? And what is its currency in the 21st century? There's one other reason I wanted to come, apart from my friendship with so many here at the Jain Center and three years of coming for uh, festivals and performances and dramas and puja. But in addition to that, do you know who the closest um, cousins are of Jains in the West? Which religion is often called the closest cousins of Jains in the West? Amish. Amish. Amish and close to Amish is the Quaker tradition because Quakers do meditation. They um, acknowledge Anikantvad, the pluralism of paths. And they make Ahimsa the very center. So there's a little child of Jainism that had grown up in the West without even knowing its mother. And it was called the Quaker tradition. So I'm a Quaker. And so it was very natural when you wanted to find somebody who would say, how was he received? That you would ask a Quaker to come because we are your little cousins from the West. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about This, this first appearance of Jainism's great ambassador. He made an immense impression, both in front of the 7,000 people at the World Parliament, but also speaking to hundreds and hundreds of audiences over the years that followed before his untimely death in 1901, as Nittenbai has already said. They said that when he strode onto the stage at the World Parliament and all the great scholars and religious leaders of the world were in the room, he made an impressive um, appearance wearing a turban of yellow which signified knowledge and a robe of purple portraying purity and activity. This first impression is hard to describe. In fact, if you go on the internet, you can hear audio recordings of these great Indian ambassadors. I'm sure you've seen this before, but there they are, standing in front of the parliament. And what's really interesting is Western religions didn't have much ability to understand how would you bring together the religions of the world. Because Christians like to say, there is only one way to heaven. And Muslims liked to say, there is only one way to heaven. And then here comes Swami, Swami Vivekananda, and he says, there are many spiritual paths, and all the paths are leading to the same mountaintop. And we will find, though we walk different paths, when we get to the mountaintop, it is the same place. And there was silence in the room. You can hear it on the recording, even now. And then Vyar Gandhi came up, and he said, we represent the oldest religious tradition of the world. And as Jains, we place ahimsa, the living non-violently with all humans and all life forms, all jivas, we place at the center. And we have another principle equally as great and equally as foundational, the principle of anikantvad. This is the principle of the plurality of ways. Each person pursues their way and their path. And again, silence in the room. And it's like the West learned from these two ambassadors from India, ah, this is how you do world religions. They had nothing in the West in the history to lay the foundation. But these ambassadors, the Hindu and the Jain ambassador, made sense of why there was a world parliament and why this was important. Do you see? It was an amazing revolutionary moment. The impression that he made in these hundreds of talks afterwards, has often been described. And I want you to see, I don't know if you can see the words on the screen, all right? Um, the uh, Henry Steele Alcott wrote, how astonished people were to see before them 
and to hear men who represented, look at this, the, who represented the ideal of spirituality and human perfectibility as taught in their respective sacred writings. And this moved the audience, I think, more than the message by itself, was this idea that they actually represented in their person, in their own spiritual practice, this ideal of spirituality and human perfectibility. Now, what began to happen in 1893, and that the great Jain leaders and teachers since then have done, is to recognize that the Jain way of life has a relevance for people from all nations, all paths, all skin colors, and even all religious traditions. That ahimsa was not something that would only work in Gujarati, right? It, it was um, a core idea of the world's faiths. What I want to try to portray is the way that through V.R. Gandhi, the message of Ahimsa began to stretch outward. He taught the message of peace. V.R. Gandhi said, may peace rule the universe. May peace rule in kingdoms and empires. May peace rule in states and in the land of potentates. May peace rule in the house of friends but may peace also rule in the house of enemies. That sentence has been quoted thousands of times since 1893. Do you hear the echo? It was also the prophet of the majority religion of the United States, Christianity, who had said the same words. Love not just your neighbor, everybody can do that, but love your enemy and do good to those who persecute you. And that same message, which was in the Western ear, V.R. Gandhi, I believe consciously, brought that in this famous quotation. You know that Mahatma Gandhi credited V.R. Gandhi, whom he knew they studied together in Bombay. Did you know? We have correspondence. And in uh, Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, he mentions the older Jane friend who helped guide him in the ways of the law and prepare him for traveling to England. Mahatma Gandhi has spoken so strongly, I think from the influence of V.R. Gandhi in part, so strongly of the influence of Jainism. No religion in the world, he says, has explained the principle of, of Ahimsa so deeply, so systematically, and showing it's how applicable it is to life as Jainism. And he finished this famous quote, by saying, if this principle became the practice of people across the entire planet, Jainism would have the utmost status, and Bhagwan Mahavira would be respected as the greatest authority on Ahimsa. And these words from Mahatma Gandhi, whose words brought India freedom, and they brought the prominence of the Indian spiritual paths to the entire planet, these words go back to his early encounter, I believe, with V.R. Gandhi, and also growing up with Jains around him. There's one other quote, however, friends, that's less well known from Mahatma Gandhi, and I, I want you to consider it for a moment, because it's part of this universalizing of the Jain way of life. Gandhi speaks of these two great contrasts, the science of war leads to dictatorship, pure and simple. But the science of nonviolence alone can lead to pure democracy. Do you see what he's doing? He's linking democracy, this system that the French and the Americans are so proud of, to Ahimsa, a foundation coming from the oldest of the Indian religious traditions. It's a brilliant connection. And then he did it a second time. Power based on love it is a thousand times more effective and permanent than power derived from fear of punishment. And the Americans and the Westerners love to have capital punishment and to threaten to put people to death and to do violence to people, groups, and to animals. And Mahatma Gandhi, reflecting the Jain way of life, spoke of the importance of power based on love. 
You know, of course, the influence of Mahatma Gandhi on Dr. Martin Luther King, the hero of people of color in the United States, the hero of the civil rights movement. I won't read the whole quote, I'll let you read it, but he shows two things. First, the influence of actually being in India and to recognize how the society is organized on the one side. But I want you to look at that second quotation because he speaks also of universal principles that are inherent in the moral structure of the universe. Just look at these words. These principles are as inescapable as the law of gravitation. Karma is as inescapable of the law of gravitation. But so is the law of ahimsa. And that's why we sometimes refer to as the science of ahimsa. Because when you act nonviolently, you set in motion a different dynamic in the world than when you act out of the logic of violence. These are its fundamental principles of human existence, of the existence of all life forms, as is karma or Newton's law of gravity. These are the basic ways that our life is organized. Now, here's in closing what I really want to try to express. And I remember being in audiences at Jaina, and it's almost as if they would line up on two sides. You sometimes have the older Jains who said, Jainism is a message for Jains. And then you had the younger Jains and the non-Jains sort of in the next side of the auditorium. And they were saying, this is a universal message. We're excited. So I would like to do something maybe as a non-Jain that the president <laughs> uh, would, would not be able to do and to describe the way in which the wisdom of V.R. Gandhi speaks directly to young people in the 21st century and to non-Jains in America, in Europe, and around the world. We live in an age when the religions of the world have moved closer together. You can't be young, 12, 18, 22, 30 years old in the United States and not encounter the religions together. And you should ta listen to some of the younger people here in the temple, you will he in the Jain Center. They will describe how their friends are all colors of the rainbow and all religions of the rainbow. We know the mandate, that, the necessity of learning to coexist. So we often teach Jainism in terms of the five great vows, and these remain a commitment for Jains in the world. But in closing, let me just mention these four thoughts from V.R. Gandhi, which I think speak to the situation of young people around the globe today, Jain or non-Jain. First of all, about evolution. Gandhi says, the universe is not for man alone, but it's a theater of evolution for all living beings. Live and let live. Your motto, right? Live and let live is its guiding principle. Ahimsa parodharma. Non-injury is the highest religion. Friends, everybody is saying now we want to be spiritual but not religious. And the nuns, the non-affiliated, are the fastest growing religious group in the United States. You know, right? Who already understood that the non-religious religion of Ahimsa is the one, the message for the 21st century? Vyar Gandhi, a prophet 120 years ago, recognized the major tendency in American religion today. The true nature of the soul is right knowledge, right faith. There we go, I'm almost done. Right knowledge, right faith, and right conduct. A religion of how we live in the world. Simple as that. This is maybe the most beautiful quote. and you, I hope you've heard it before. V.R. Gandhi said, this is my country, that is your country. Those are the conceptions of narrow souls. To the liberal-minded, the whole world is a family. I've experienced that in the Jane Center as a guest on so many occasions. This is the message we bring to the world. Jains live it. They open the doors to non-Jains. And this message to transcend narrow nationalisms, this is the heritage of Jainism for the global family of human beings and of all living things. And finally, last of all, I love this quote. We preach and practice brotherhood, not only of men and women, but of all living beings. The brotherhood and sisterhood of all living beings. 
and not just on Sundays, but all the days of the week. We believe in universal justice. We believe present is result of past actions, and we depend for our salvation on our own acts and deeds. Sit down in a coffee shop. Ask the person next to you what they think of those quotes, and whether they are secular, Christian, Jewish, or from India. They'll nod their head and say, now that is wisdom. That is great wisdom. These are the core teachings of Vira Gandhi. I've run out of time. I want to close merely by saying that here you have your great ambassador to the West who brings the message of spiritual peace, brings the message of Anikanfad, of overcoming difference, brings the message of us moving together. And I leave you with the inspiring words of V.R. Gandhi, a young man with an old soul, the first face of Jainism in Europe and America. He says, to that person of high aim whose body, mind, and soul act together, all secrets of nature are revealed. He feels within himself that universal life wherein there is no distinction, no sense of separation, but all around all bliss, unity, and peace. So may peace be upon us. May the beautiful affirmation of Anikanfad characterize all that we do, and may the ahimsa within us become the ahimsa for all living beings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Philip. Bye. Just have a <coughs> couple of things, maybe three, four to add. In three trips that he made to the West, Europe and America, VRG, as we popularly call him and remember him as, delivered 535 lectures. He had established few institutions to propagate his message of Ahinsa. He not only talked about Jain religion, Jain faith, and Jain conduct, but also defended Indian culture, Indian traditions. And I give you one specific example. In one of the days, this, that happened to be a 17 days conference, by the way, in 1893. The day ended with ridicule of women and Indian practices for women. And next morning, he literally defended that to the result. And this was, for the lack of better words, I will say, an attack on Hindu faith at that time, night before. It did not matter. He was an Indian first and then a chain. And it was written in the American news at that time. People were astonished to learn about his views, his explanation about India. He literally put a stop at that time about ridiculing the practices of India in those days. So, ladies and gentlemen, where do we go from here, I think Jaina level, we're trying to revive VRG, its principles, but the most important thing, practices. His principles were not new. They were known to time immemorial for us, not even Lord Mahavira in 2600 years ago. They were known to us for long. But this is the time when we take this message to the rest of the world in our small way and see if we can impact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virendra Bhai, for your time. Uh, if allowed, we can take a couple of questions, but that's up to Virendra Bhai and the committee. So, uh, we'll be happy to answer questions, Philip Bhai or myself. Feel free. Yes, Andy. Uh, is there a base within the foundation, uh, the, the 
here in Gandhi Foundation uh, that uh, you people are running where you have started collecting historical uh, uh, incidents or uh, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, anecdotes is one thing, but uh, you know, yeah. that wherever, no, we, wherever Vivekananda went in US, it was documented or, you know, there were photographs or there, there would be uh, formal documentation. Mm. Yeah. Something like uh, normally what they show in, histo in uh, documentaries, uh, there might be an entry in Elliot's Island, for example, just as if he visited or he yeah. came, something like that. As a foundation, have we been collecting or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, the, the question is, is there any collection of his historical times in America and Europe? And the answer is yes. Uh, there is a gentleman named Pravin Shisha in New York who was the chairman of the VRG Scholarship Committee and he has gathered a lot of information. And uh, I happen to be the current chair of the same committee and uh, we do want to put all these things together to benefit. Uh, I do know there were comments from the Ohio governor or somebody or from Ohio. There were so many clippings of these 535 lectures. So yeah, sooner or later, we will put that so that others can benefit from it. Thank you. Uh, the question is, did he travel significantly in the U.S., including West? Unfortunately, I do not know the answer. Uh, he traveled extensively, but I cannot say for sure whether he was in L.A. or San Francisco or anywhere. Do you have any idea? So I don't know the exact stops, but uh, we have the record that he delivered up to 535 lectures in the very few years between 1893 and 1901, that he uh, was extremely well received in London and founded a Jane Society in London as well as two societies in the US. And I've tried to follow what happened to those societies and that I actually don't know. But what I would love to see us begin to recreate what were the stops, where did he stay for how long? So now we have the materials for further biographical study. Thank you, that's a great question. All right. Thank you very much, Varendrabai. Thank you, Jaspai. Thank you, Nitin Bhai, and thank you, Mr. Clayton. And I think uh, today's present presentation is just the uh, appetizer. We would love to have you in one of the big functions where we can present it to the entire society because we have a lot to learn ourselves of our heritage. Uh, we as a Jain, obviously, feel that yeah we follow the religion but sometimes we follow forget to follow the history of the religion so we would lo allow to invite you back matter of fact uh, once you come here you automatically become the member of the Jain center okay uh, i would like to introduce our next presenter uh, you might have seen him performing all kind of vidis and pujas and thrust ceremony and everything Want to say something? Oh. No. No. Okay. Uh, the ceremony and thing, and that is none other than uh, our Sanik Bhai Gala. And with the knowledge he possesses, with the vidhi he does, it's very difficult to imagine that uh, he is what of his age. Uh, we could expect that from, you know, obviously a lot older person, but being only 27 year old, being in technology field himself and then same time practicing Jainism and learning about it and I will have to say he learned from the very same teacher Nandu Bhai learn all these busy so we could understand that where the heritage is coming from but uh, the wonderful part is that uh, he wants not to only connect to the first generation or the older generation but he have material he would love to depart, he would love to part with, with the younger generation. And with that, I would like to invite Sranik Bhai.
हेलो एवरीवन जय जिनेन्द्र आई बिलीव आई एम डिलीवरिंग दिस फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ माय लाइफ आई हैव नेवर डिलीवर्ड प्रेजेंटेशन एगो आई हैव डिलीवर्ड सेवरल लेक्चर्स ड्यूरिंग पर्यूशन एंड आई हैव डन वेरियस स्वाध्याय एट मेनी सेंटर्स in india and in us but i don't know i have uh, never tried to interact with youth like this uh, powerpoint presentation and this was a great opportunity uh, mahendra bhai talked to me that uh, you would have to spend some time with our young adults and uh, there was a very short time i had selected a topic and randomly prepared some slides on it uh, this is a very huge topic and um, i believe uh, this topic is of uh, great research and development and great knowledge we can gain from it because basically jainism as we understand we are onto one part of it but not through the second part this is the very huge topic and i have uh, randomly created some side uh, slides so we will touch up the topic uh, by brushing it not much in depth but i will let let you introduce jainism is it a ritualistic or spiritualistic what do you believe you want to hear from the audience <laughs> okay but uh, <coughs> the two day program we celebrated here do you believe it's a ritual or spiritual yeah we will understand this what is ritual and what is spiritual and what is its combination and what is jainism is it only ritualistic or spiritualistic too and by the way i will let you know that jainism is a combo of both it's not only ritualistic but it is spiritualistic on its part too we would like to understand uh firstly i want to know what is jain we by birth have received the title of being a jain what is the jain the person who follows path of jin jin means vitrag the person who has completely destructed all karmas rag dvesh etc and obtained omniscience the persons who follow his path is a jain there is no better definition than this performing certain rituals or doing samaik doing puja doing something is not termed as jain the this is the perfect definition the person following vitrag's path do we follow it we try vitrag's path is such that it will be combination of ritual and spiritual both here we says it says jainism is a path towards purification of soul jainism is not a particular thing or something to do and get rid of apne kahiye ne ke samayik pati gayu aa be divas no program pati gayu it's it's not like completing and getting rid of do do you feel 
uh, when when we see a three hour movie do you feel like uh, it completes and we get happiness we want to get rid of it in that three hours do you, do we went, want to get rid of it but while doing samai do we want to get rid of it doing last day pratikaman and last day of uh, pollution do we want to get rid of that samai pratikaman here 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 it says jainism is a path jainism is a path towards liberation and it says i believe it is not a religion limited to few but it is a way of life for person practicing it it's not limited to jain community in one of the stavan we say mahavir keval jaino na nahi pan akhi duniya na ch mahavir is not only meant for jainism he is for whole world the thing is that we need to follow his path the person following this path is called jain it's not that someone non jain practicing jainism he is not counted as jain he is counted as jain the person following the path is jain next slide what is ritual we all know performing certain religious functions as done from generations to generations it it is meant by uh, it is meant as ritual we we celebrate anniversary function every year one or two day function this is ritual right right as per as per understanding it's a ritual doing every day puja samaik uh daily activities of monks jain monks are such that their activities and the part of life is such that they have to take a pain so much they have to accept the pain accept every situation in life but this all we term as part of ritual this is as per oxford def definition ritual is something that is practiced from generation to generation our our forefathers were celebrating anniversary of god and that's why we are celebrating it and in future till this temple remains we would be continuing to celebrate it but what is spiritual what is spirituality spirit spirit means self it means soul that which is connected to self is called spiritual every rituals every rituals in jainism are connected to soul even puja even samaik even pratigaman even take any of the rituals every ritual is connected to soul but we have to get in depth of it doing puja is not not just a uh, putting a kesar tilak on idol of god it has its, its own vast meaning while speaking we speak the words and chant mantras and everything but without understanding it i i generally say when we do abhishek puja when we do abhishek puja we chant the mantra gnana kalash bhari atma samta ras bhar pur श्री जिन ने नवरावता कर्म थे चकचू हाउ हाउ डू वी डू अभिषेक नॉट इट्स नॉट जस्ट बाय वॉटर एज पर द वर्डिंग्स इट्स एज ध्यान कलश द कलश ऑफ नॉलेज कलश ऑफ ज्ञान एंड इन साइड इट फिल द वॉटर ऑफ समता samta's water samta means you understand equanimity not 
disturbing your mind in any of the situations, be it good or bad, your mind must be in same level. That is called samta. With knowledge and samta, we have to do abhishek of God. See, understand the spirituality in between every rituals. Every rituals are meant to take us to path of spirituality. But by understanding their wordings and their inner depth. If we, if we only perform rituals, we get separated by ritual tasks. In Jainism, there is a Swetambar, Digambar, even Swetambar, Deravasi, Sthanakvasi, Terapanthi, there are much many sects as per rituals. Uh, every Jain is separated by rituals. Some have closed eyes, some monks do not wear clothes, some have open eyes, monks wear clothes, then even some go to some go to temple, some even do not go, uh, go to temple for the whole life. Who is true? Who is true? The person going whole life to temple or person not even going to temple once in a while? Who is true? Person believing uh, open eyed God or person believing closed eyed God? Who is correct? The basic thing against again comes the person who follows the path of Vitrag is correct. Vitrag has never said Samyag, Vitrag has al always said the path of Moksha, Samyag Darshan, Jnana and Charit. He has never said Puja is the path of Jainism, close eyed idol is the path of Jainism, wearing white clothes is the path of Jainism. He has never bifurcated like that. Ultimate goal is attaining liberation. Every path that leads to this goal is correct. There is a goal. Just as representatives from all states are centered towards central government, the representatives of every state visit White House, but the path to White House is one. Just like that, spiritual path to Jainism is one. May it be Digambar, may it be Shvetambar, may it be Sthanakvasi, Terapanthi and so and so, but the ultimate goal is one and that is attaining liberation, attaining moksha. Then who among them will attain liberation? Who among them will attain liberation? This is the path of attaining liberation. Just as uh, profession Clayton, uh, Professor Clayton said, uh, path may be multiple, but the ultimate goal is one. Multiple paths may lead to an ultimate goal. Is Jainism only performing certain rituals or even more than that? The answer is already given to you. Every, behind every ritual, there is a spiritualism and this spiritualism is taught in a Tattvar Sutra, right in the first chapter, right on the first line of Tattvar Sutra, what is Moksha Marg, what is the path to liberation and it is said Samyak Darshan, Samyak Jnan and Samyak Charitra, right belief, right knowledge and right conduct is the path to liberation. May you be of any of the sect, may you be of any of religion or may you be placed anywhere in the world, 
no matter it if you have right belief right knowledge and right conduct in life it is the path to liberation samyak darshan gnyan charitrani moksha marga and this sutra is believed by all sects this sutra is accepted by all sects tatvar sutra the whole sutra is like a bible of jainism every sect of jainism may it be sthanakvasi digambar terapanthi shvetambar may it be any of the sect all believe in this tatvar sutra and everyone has to accept that samyak darshan gnyan charitrani moksha marga and jainism is based on anekantvad multifaceted truth the person who says i am true is not true as per jainism the person who says i am true and my belief is true is not truth it is a single faceted truth bhagwan mahavir says the person must have multifaceted truth you are true but the person ahead of you may see from various angles and he may tell some other thing and it may be true there is a best example mavi taught anekantvad right from the womb of mother do you know when in the womb of mother yeah ye yeah. mahavir stop moving in the womb of mother thinking that my mother would not be happy and she would have pain because of my moving around so he stopped moving and stayed still but his mother thought other way around that my uh, child in a womb may have died and she started crying then mavir again started moving was it true was it true why did he stop moving why did he stop moving to stop the pain of mother the intention of mavir was correct to stop the pain of mother the intention of mavir right in the womb of mother was correct that i don't have to give pain to my mother then why did he start moving again he understood that the angle i have thought my mother is not thinking from that angle my mother is think thinking in different way so let me think as per her way and thinking on her way mavi started moving again right from the womb of mother he thought as anekantvad we we understand the life of mavi you know various number of ways but do not get the cream of it mavir thought even from the womb of mother we have never thought about it mavir thought from his sadhana time while he was a monk and doing sadhana at that time he had to bear the pain of nails in his ears all know that incident all of you know that incident mahavir says there is no need for you to bear the pain of the nails in your ears but you as my child we are all the child of mahavir you all as my child 
you can bear the pain of two words in your ears. By the two nails, it signifies the two bad words or two words of criticism. We can bear it. We do not have to bear the pain of nail, but we can bear the two words of pain. And this is right Jainism. And every rituals are rotated towards this principles. Again, the samta bhava comes, the equanimity comes. Bearing the pain was samta bhava. The equanimity, bearing the pain of two words, again comes the equanimity. This is the base principle of Jainism. And Jainism is rotating towards this. We do samaik to attain this level of equanimity. That is, samaik is a ritual, but in heart it is spiritual. It is achieving this spirituality by heart. Samya Gyan Darshan Charitra, every rituals. I have prepared many of the slides, but I am I am going further of that. Because I have never presented it fa or formally. Uh, I have already told that Abhishek is Gyan colors and Samta. Chandan is coldness, peace, as good as Chandan. Why do we ch do Chandan Puja? To attain the peace the coldness of Chandan and the peace is the quality of soul, it is related to soul and hence it is spiritual. Again push blossoming like flower, attaining that blossom in our soul is why we do Pushpa Puja. Again Dup dying for others and ultimately leading upwards. Just as the smoke of dhup rises upwards, our soul has to attain upward direction. After coming in this life as a manushya, we do not have to move downwards, but it says your soul must be uplifted. That is again leading to spirituality. Again Deepak, Deepak Puja, we do to attain knowledge. Deepak is a symbol. Lamp is a symbol of knowledge and knowledge again is a virtue of soul, ultimately leads to spirituality. In every puja, every rituals, if you go in depth, you will understand every puja is connected, every ritual is connected to spirituality. Every rituals are ultimately collect, connected to spirituality. The basis of spirituality is attaining the virtues. What is spirituality then? Attaining the virtues of soul. Why we do puja? Why we do any of the rituals? Attaining the virtues is the basic goal of every Jain. By, do, by doing darshan or puja of Lord, we Try to attain the virtues of Lord. Lord has indefinite virtues, innumerable virtues. We have to attain some of the virtues from Lord. Yeah. That is ultimately, I just want to say that even while continuing every ritual, our aim must be to connect it to spiritual and ultimately lead to the path of liberation that is Samyak Darshan, Gnan and Charitra. We must not be stuck up only in rituals or we must not directly jump towards spirituality, but we have to balance both. We have to do the rituals by ultimately understanding and linking it to spirituality which will ultimately lead us to 
the path of liberation that is samyak darshan jnan and charitra may we all attain this ultimate path of liberation and attain the liberation at the short as we can we have some time so we can have any question answer session uh, if you have any question we can uh, research or something yeah can you do you have to engage in rituals to get the spirituality or without ritual still you be able to attain yeah what your ultimate path is the moksha yeah as per the the question is such that are rituals necessary or can we directly go to a spiritual path and attain liberation what do you think are the rituals necessary depending upon where you are yeah depending upon where you are yeah what do you say yeah yeah the ultimate thing we can say mahavir had knowledge of three types right in the womb of mother he knew that i would attain liberation in this life itself then why did he took diksha and became a monk monkhood in itself is a ritual monkhood is a ritual doing all monkhood related activities living whole of his palace he went alone in the jungles why did he do, do that he could have sat in a palace and meditated inside a single room why was there a necessity to go in a jungle and bear such a pain because till the age of 30 till he was in uh, he was like us household. yeah uh, till he was a householder there was not a single pain is in his life he was a prince of a king he never had a single pain in his life why did he go to a path that has pains he wants us to show that spirituality doesn't come sitting in a place which is very much easy spirituality must be attained by practice by purusharth even even mahavir if we can say mahavi taught us that parents are ultimately of huge importance to us do we believe it parents of are of much of importance mahavir himself practiced it he had much more knowledge than his parents right from womb he had three types of knowledge from his womb mati gnan shrut gnan and avdhi gnan then to when his parents arrived in front of him he used to stand up and respect this shows the daily things which are essentials are to be done by everyone and that would lead us to goal of spirituality rituals must be done may it be any of your sect maybe rituals are different in every sect as your sect permits you have to do that rituals as per your knowledge but rituals must ultimately lead us to 
spiritualist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Swadhyay, the meaning itself, it says Swa Adhyay. Swa means self, and Adhyay means learning, knowledge, self learning. It is a Swadhyay. By doing Swadhyay, understanding the teachings of Mahavir, teachings of Tirthankaras, what is the ultimate? goal to understand the self and swadhyay leads to this self that is it it leads to spirituality yeah any other question can you expand upon your path to attaining this knowledge because uh, when you were introduced or when uh, uh, he introduced you, he mentioned that you have self-learned equally many of these things. Yeah. My path as per study of Jainism, I cannot say that I have learned on myself. The Guru Tattva is much more important in life. Even I may have learnt any single word from a guru that is of much more importance to me. Today I am because I am here because of my gurus. The rituals I perform, every people say it, it was nice, it was nice, it was wonderful, it was brilliant, it was so and so. But behind that, I have to teach myself, I have to control myself, people would be praising to A to Z. I do not have to carry by that words. I should not be carried by that words. Because it will ultimately increase my kashayas. I will be much more uh, I can say I will be rise from earth towards uh, in air. So ultimately this teaching is from Paramatma and Guru. Ultimately no matter where to which height you go, but you have to stay down to earth and this is the basic thought of Paramatma and Guru. Without Guru, I could not have learned these things. The rituals, my Guru thought, uh, as, as uh, I said to Virendra Bhai, that my Guru was same as Nandu Bhai's Guru. Nandu Bhai, uh, you all know, he has come here many times. He performs rituals in a fantastic way. And he has learned from Guru uh, Vidhikar Bankim Bhai. And even I learned from Bankimbai. But the Bankimbai was, I can say, he was a fantastic guru. The words he thought are of importance, must, to, must be given importance. In every pujans, I went with him. Firstly, he never allowed to allowed me to speak. In first pujans, he did not allow me to speak. Then he, then in one, one of the pujans, he was not healthy and he gave me to speak. You, you perform this, you speak this mantra and I will look at it. And in that mantra, I made a mistake and he corrected my mistake in front of thousands of people. But that sense of Guru Tattva, that he thought, I cannot believe 
if he did not correct did not correct that mistake at that time it would have continued to be mistake forever. This is the upkar of guru and then after hearing me he saw the some of the capabilities in me then he kept it his mouth shut for the rest of his life. He passed away two years back but till the end of his life he just used to sit nearby me and allow me to speak. So, this is Guru. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you, when many young people uh, participate into rituals, they do not have the same interest like older people and, and they for whatever reason, maybe lack of understanding, they do not uh, partake in it with the same interest. How do you develop interest into rituals that, that that are new to you, like two days we perform all the puja, but many young people never done it before. So how, how to develop interest in rituals? The interest in rituals can be developed in only one way, that is knowledge. Knowledge is ultimate power. The knowledge about rituals, any of the rituals we are doing, understand what is it get the knowledge of that rituals get the knowledge behind that which leads to spirituality and then we can link it from ritual to spiritual gaining knowledge is much more importance you have to take up some time and get the knowledge regarding what we are doing uh, the elders even if do uh, if they don't have no knowledge they believe it as uh, worth doing and participate in it. I believe majority of people won't have knowledge, but it's a. I can say it, it's coming from generation to generation. So elderly peoples are doing. Even elders don't have knowledge of what these rituals are. But youth would have to get the knowledge to create the interest in these rituals. So, knowledge is the ultimate necessity. Yeah. Please, sir. You had a question? Yeah. Uh, this may be a little bit personal. At, at what age did you experience a certain type of curiosity that you wanted to pursue this kind of I cannot, uh, I cannot really express the age, but right from my childhood at the time of um, when I was three and a half years, one of the Acharya Bhagavan, one of Acharya Bhagavan made me sit near him on the part. He may have saw something in me, but then he did not leave me. He made me study Jainism and study the in-depth of Jainism, assigning this task, Acharyas do not have much time, so assigning this task to other monks, they used to teach me Jainism, they used to teach me rituals teach me sutras, everything I used to sit 4 to 5 hours at a stretch facing the wall and learning Jainism. At a stretch I used to sit 4 to 5 hours in my childhood when every other child of my age were playing, I never had interest in playing. I, I had never held a bat or a ball in my hand. I had never went to theatre till now, but the interest in Jainism, the curiosity in Jainism was right from my childhood and that I believe may be the past sanskars of my life. 
Yeah. I may have carried some good deeds from past years, so I had interest in Jainism. Otherwise, reaching till this stage, performing rituals in this state, this place, US, it was not believable, believable to me. Even my parents, even my family uh, could not believe I can reach such high. Yeah, for youth in uh, United States, the situation really is youth in United States, I have saw there is a curiosity because without curiosity, no one can gain any knowledge. There is a curiosity in every youth in Jainism. Uh, in United States, there is a curiosity. You have to develop that curiosity and try to attain the knowledge of basic principles of Jainism. The knowledge is the ultimate power. I will repeat, knowledge is ultimate power. Without knowledge, there is nothing. The rituals we will perform and in future years to come, we would perform it in the same way, but without gaining knowledge, it will, it would not be connected to our soul. So, for the youth in Jainism, I believe you have to take some time in your life to gain the knowledge, rest all things, I believe youth in USA are much more ahead spirituality speaking than youth in India. As per my experience, Indian youth are no doubt develops ritually. Ritually, they are carrying on lots of activities in Jainism, but spirituality is a virtue of soul and it can only be developed by discipline and the discipline in the people here I saw and this discipline is very much necessary to develop spirituality in life. The discipline we can say in every walks of life, discipline is must. In India, we do not have discipline. May it be a, a matter of driving or walking or talking, there is no discipline in our life. And it is very hard to cultivate that discipline in that informal background. Here everything is formal. So, everyone is self-disciplined. We do not have to teach discipline here because discipline is right from childhood and that discipline is the greatest quality to attain spirituality. I believe the youth here are very much spiritually developed because of this discipline, even all other virtues. One example, they do not have maya or kur kapat, I can say, uh, what to express in English, I do not understand. Uh, DC. Yeah, yeah, they are straightforward. They are straightforward. They show what they are. In back India, we show much more brighter and much more good than we are. 
may be uh, as, as a general example I can say for example when I go to temple if there is no one around in temple I will do speedily I will do my vidhi speedily and come back when there are many people in temple oh I will I will do it uh, uh, with much of bhav and I will show everyone that I am doing it with uh, great uh, bhav in myself this is lack of straightforwardness No, but everything depends on you, how you know from the inside, from it's coming from the inside, right? Yeah, but in general, in general, I have saw that youth here are much more straightforward, much more capable of receiving Jainism, much more capable of getting to spirituality, much more capable because. Just for example, the soft skills of talking, every people here, by talks we can understand the, the soft skills and hard skills. Do you understand that? In India, generally, I cannot say of whole India, but generally speaking, there is a majority if two cars come to the same way, they start speaking heavenly mantras <laughs> by showing their hard speaking skills. Here, I have I have come for the fifth time and till now. I have not seen any incidents like that. The understanding nature, the simplicity, this is much more necessary to be cultivated for developing spirituality. These are the basic principles. We cannot jump towards those high goals, but to reach there, we have to go step by step. and. I believe youth in US are much more qualified rather for attaining the path of spirituality. Yes, we are honoring them, that's really good, you know. <laughs> no, it's it's true, it's true. Even they e even if they are not much more participating in rituals, but due to the qualities they may attain spirituality. The qualities are are much more important, I can say. Yeah. Again, this is the matter of question. Is it only ritual or only spiritual or ritual spiritual combo? Again, this is a matter of question. I would say, I would say that there, this all is common. This all is attained there very much easily. There are many saints 
to lead them to this path. There all is this all is common, not of 10th grade, even, even the persons of uh, child of uh, 5 to 6 years, they do not want. There everything is common. But religion again is not limited to that ritual. By doing Navanu itself, we cannot attain path of liberation. Yeah, we, we have to go in depth, no doubt. There we have many saints, many spiritually developed peoples, many spiritually developed youth, many of the children. But here we do not don't have saints, we do not have easy access to that path. And without that easy access, the limited quantity of dharma they are doing, but involving their self in that activity is much more important. They, they may have not done 108 yatras, but I can say I have performed n number of pujans in India, not a single kid has come to help in a pujan. When we perform pujan, not a single kid is interested in helping. It can be relatively compared, it can be relatively compared. Maybe there are many here too. There is a curiosity to develop the self, but if we get access to that path, if, if, if Shatrunja was located here, maybe there were n number of kids doing Shatrunja Yatra. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can just say, yeah, I can, I can just say the situation in India and situation in US is totally different. In India, we have time. Obviously, in US, even all of you have that 24 hours too, I believe. We have 24 years, uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, the comparison is not, I think, uh, comparison is, yeah, comparison is not. It's the upbringing of the children here. You can see Swami Narayan Mandir. Is Swami Narayan Mandir the No, we are not talking. This no. is only the presentation. Yeah. And please be specific to the presentation. Let's talk about religion, not uh, comparison. Yeah, no, just, just as a point of youth, I can say, you all are capable for developing spirituality. The necessity is just gaining knowledge. And by gaining knowledge, you can develop yourself. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. We will take a few couple of more questions if there are any. Otherwise, we will conclude it. The, the, uh, one thing I want to point out, we were different in India and we were different in the USA. So, we were talking about the whole country, we were talking about the whole country. We were talking about India, we were talking about the whole Sanskrit, the whole culture, and the whole world. We were talking about the whole world. I am extremely proud of them. I am extremely proud of them. I am extremely proud of them. Whatever they believe in, they believe in 100%. Maybe more than that. They reflect it in their attitude. Yeah, that's more necessity. So, any other questions, please? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, I you helping yourself towards the final goal by, you know, by following your rituals blindly without knowledge. Uh, could, I could you speak up a little bit more? Are you helping yourself towards the final goal you know, 
My foreigner, he was blind in the Ah, you are uh, 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 telling him that uh, is he following? He's asking a question. Okay. Not, uh, not going to go ahead. Come on, come on. He's saying that can you attain the path of, uh, path that leads to goal without gaining knowledge and blindly following the rituals? The answer is no. Without knowledge, there is nothing. Every ritual must be knowledge based and must be related to spirituality and that spirituality leads to the path of liberation. So, base is knowledge. Without gaining knowledge, there is nothing. Any more questions? Feel free. He is not going to be here till next year. Okay. Thank well, thanks for your patience. Thank you. Thanks for your information. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, he, he has visited a lot of cities and obviously lived in a lot of homes. So his observation is definitely based on what he experienced here. And uh, you know, I definitely appreciate his comments about our youth. And yes, we experience the day, day in and day out. But thank you again, Sanik Bhai from the Jain Center of Southern California. He's been a very gracious guest for us. For three days since uh, morning to we kept him busy. Uh, sometimes we would not feed him till late because he need to be in Puja's dress. But uh, no, he...